Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now, this photograph shows what can be achieved with a bit of shot planning. The finished image is a composite of separate background, foreground, and clean plate image captures. By combining the images in post-production, the finished photograph is then achieved. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so what are we going to start with? Uh, I've got set up at the moment uh, a tripod here uh, and also uh, a C-stand. Now, the C-stand I'm going to use to hold the subject. Now, the subject is a piece of kiwi fruit, which I've uh, sliced and mounted on this uh, small piece of welding rod. So what I'm going to do is just pop that in the top of this um, C-stand. Just like that. So I'll just arrange that. There. I find this uh, a good way to, uh, to do this because it gives you a lot of control over uh, exactly how you can place uh, your subject. Right, so the next thing would be the camera. Now I'm using this uh, digital SLR which is tethered into uh, Capture One software. On the front of this, I have a 24 to 70 uh, zoom lens, and on the top here, I have a flash sync trigger. So, we'll just place this on the top of the tripod. Like so, and have a go at lining everything up. So, first thing to do would just be to bring this up so that it's more or less in line with the camera. So I'll just do that by eye. And then just have a look through the camera uh, and see if we can compose the picture. OK, so the first thing I'll do is just uh, zoom in a bit. And see if we can focus that up somewhat. There we go. Now I'll just use the centre column uh, just to wind that up a little there. So it's about there somewhere. Uh, and we'll just turn that round so it's pointing a little more centrally like that. OK, so with that now composed, the next thing to do uh, would be just to turn the camera on uh, and we'll do a test exposure. So with the camera turned on, you can see that the software has recognised the camera. Uh, and these are the settings which is on the camera at the moment. So it has 100 ISO, uh, 50th of a second, with a 2.8 aperture. So if I just grab an image like that, this will tell me just what contamination we're getting from uh, the house lights. And as you can see from the image here, uh, we're actually getting quite a lot. Now, this can um, cause contamination to your finished picture. Uh, at the very least, it will give a colour cast uh, to everything that you probably don't want. So, in order to get rid of that, I'm just going to change these settings uh, to something that I can use with flash illumination. So, the first thing I'm going to do is change the uh, shutter speed from a 50th of a second to the flash sync speed for that camera which is 1 250th of a second. And also, I'm going to change the aperture from 2.8 um, to a more reasonable f8 to give me a bit more depth of field. So with these new settings, I'll grab another image. OK, now in this image, you can see that there is actually nothing at all. And that's exactly what we want. So by doing that, it means that all the illumination from now on will be coming from the flash. So that's what I'm going to set up next. So this is the studio head that I'll be using today. This is a Profoto B1X. Uh, and I'm going to place this um, behind the subject in line with the camera. Uh, that way, the subject will actually hide the flash gun. Uh, so in order to make this work, you've actually got to place it quite a long way back. So I'm going to take it all the way back here. We'll place it about here somewhere. 
Now, in order to get this to line up properly, I find the easiest way to do it uh, is to use um, the uh, tethering in the camera. So what I can do on here is introduce a thing called Live View. So if I just click on this icon, that will open the shutter on the camera. And if I increase the ISO to make the camera temporarily a little more sensitive, and I take it up to 32,000 ISO, uh, and I can, uh, again, temporarily just bring the shutter speed uh, back down to maybe a 50th. And that will then give me an image on the screen. So by watching the image on the screen uh, and moving the uh, light in the background, I can make the whole thing line up. Let me show you what I mean. So if I just bring this a little closer, for instance, uh, and I'll just turn this on, uh, and again, temporarily, I'll just turn the modeling light on. OK, so now you can see that I can easily line up where this needs to be. So I'll just take it back a bit more. And watching the image on the screen, I can get it in more or less the right position. There's something about there should do me. I might take it back a bit further. The further back you take it, the easier it is to actually line it up. So about there. Once I've done that, I can turn the modding light out. OK. So now I can just dispense with the live view, reset my ISO and shutter speed, and with an arbitrary energy set on the uh, flash, uh, I will just uh, grab an image. So I'll just turn the flash sync trigger on and grab an image. OK, and you can see from this that straight out of the, uh, the can, that's not too bad at all. Um, I've no idea what the energy is, but really, it doesn't really matter, uh, as long as you've uh, got the result you want. Uh, so I think that's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, in fact, I'll just have a close look around the edge. Yes, I think that's worked quite well. It's possibly a little over. Uh, but then again, the, uh, the centre detail is actually quite nice. So just for completeness, what I can do now is uh, I'll just take um, a stop off the energy of the light uh, and just to see what the difference is. So I'll just take it down by one stop. Yeah, I think having done that little exercise, uh, I'm better off with the extra stop. So we'll just pop that back. There we are. OK, now this time I'm going to grab the image uh, from here so I have no chance of disturbing the camera at all. There. So that has given us uh, the first of our images that we're going to combine into the final photograph. The next thing to do uh, would be to capture uh, a background. Here we go. So I've swapped out the uh, flash head for this uh, background. And this is just a piece of card uh, which I've got hanging from this uh, C stand. So once again, I'm going to employ um, the live view uh, in the tethering to set this up properly. So if I just open up live view, so with Live View now active, uh, I can watch the monitor and move the uh, background until everything is in place. So I'll just bring this a bit closer. Here somewhere. Let's take that up a bit. There we are. So now I know that I've got uh, a background which is covering all of my frame area. So now I have the uh, background in position. Um, what I need to do now is think about how I'm going to make that graduation. Uh, so what I want to do is place a, uh, a flash head uh, around here somewhere, pointing this way. 
um, which will then illuminate the, uh, the card here and give me a graduation. So once again, I'll use the same flash head that I used to illuminate the subject. But obviously, if I place it here, then it's going to appear in the picture. So what I need to do is get it out of the way. So I usually just drop it down a little, like so. And point it up, like that. Now again, to evaluate what I'm doing, I'm going to use the modelling light on the, uh, on the flash head. So I'll just turn the modelling light on. Uh, and just looking through the viewfinder, I can see that I'm getting fairly even illumination from that. So if I just grab an image like that, you can see from this that there is no uh, discernible um, graduation in the background. Now that's because this light is too far away uh, and doesn't have anything on the front of it to concentrate the, uh, the beam. So what I'm going to do is just move that a bit closer. I'll just check that in the viewfinder. Okay. We'll grab that again. Now you can just see the um, top of the flash head uh, at the bottom of the picture here. Uh, but the other thing is that this is far, far too bright. Uh, so I'm just going to turn the energy down on that head um, by, let's say, two stops. We'll just fire that again. So from that image, you can see that I'm starting to get there. Uh, it does need a little bit of fine tuning. But before I get too carried away, what I'm going to do is place this uh, filter and reflector assembly on the front of the head. Now this will do two things. The first of all, it will colour the light, as you can see, uh, and secondly, it will concentrate it. So now you can see that on the background here, you're getting uh, quite a concentrated spot. It's probably not lined up uh, precisely at the moment. Uh, I'll just have a little look and see where it is. Yeah, it's a bit low, and also the head, um, this part of the head, is actually in the picture. So I'm just going to lower that, like so, and possibly just point that up again. A bit like that. I'll just grab another image from the software. There we are, that's starting to get there. You can see the um, graduation is uh, falling off quite nicely. It's still not quite in the right place. I think it just needs to go up ever so slightly more. So I'll just adjust that. And we'll grab another image. There, that seems to have worked uh, pretty well. So that's good. Uh, I can turn the modelling light off because we no longer need that on. There we go. OK, so now we've captured our foreground image, uh, which was the Kiwi illuminated from behind. Uh, and we've also captured a background image. Uh, but I also need a thing called a clean slate. Now, a clean slate is just the background without any foreground at all. Uh, so the thing to do is just to uh, remove this completely now. So I'll just take that out of the line, like so. Being very careful not to touch the camera or the, uh, or the light, or the background for that matter. Uh, and now I'll just grab yet another image. There, and that will give me uh, what is referred to as this clean slate. OK, so with those three separate images now captured, it's time to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. So here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up the three images that we captured. So this is the foreground image, 
This is the background image. And this is the clean slate. This is the background without anything in the foreground. So the first thing I need to do is just make a stack of all three of these images. So I'm going to go to File, come down to Scripts, and just go across to Load Files into Stack. Uh, I'll ask it to add the open files and I'm just going to click on OK. I'm not going to bother with attempt to automatically align sources uh, because with a graduated background like this uh, it will find it very difficult to do. So I'm just going to click on OK. There we are and Photoshop has made um, this stack of these different layers. So with the foreground image at the top of the stack here what I'm going to do is just change the blend mode for this particular image. Uh, so I'm just going to go from normal uh, and go to um, either lighten, which works quite well, or lighter colour, which also works quite well. I think I'll actually just go with lighter colour. And what this will do is combine these two images um, with the lightest parts of uh, the first image overlaying the second. So in, in fact you can see exactly what it's done. If I turn this on and off that's what we had before and that's what we've got now. So we're almost there really just with those two images. But we do need to just get rid of this um, support and that is where this final layer at the bottom comes in. So if I select the image which is one up from it, which is this one here. So that's the background, the one we can see now. Uh, and I'm just going to add a layer mask to that, like so. Now, uh, the layer mask is currently empty. So if I paint on that layer mask, it will reveal what is below it, which is the, uh, the clean slate. So if I just make sure my foreground colour is black and pick a paintbrush. Uh, we're going to need a reasonable size to start with. Maybe a bit bigger still. Uh, and very soft. So just starting right at the very bottom here, if I just paint that through, what it's actually doing is revealing the layer that's underneath it. Uh, and incidentally, if I go too far, if I go right up here into the, uh, into the fruit itself, then um, I can always correct this because it's only a mask. It's not doing anything to the actual image itself. So if I now, instead of painting with black, paint with white, uh, I can put this part of the kiwi back. But I don't want a, uh, a soft uh, brush anymore. Uh, so this time I'm just going to change that to being quite hard and maybe a bit smaller and I'll just paint that bit back in. I'm doing this very quickly you could take a bit more care but you get the idea. Okay so that's got rid of the support uh, we still have this small gap uh, so what I'm going to do now uh, is just make a stamp uh, layer of all of these different layers. So deselect all the layers by just clicking outside of them and then hold down the shift key, the control key, the alt key and press the E key on the keyboard and that will make this stamp layer which is the one that I've got at the top. Now what I can do on this one is just a little uh, simple cloning uh, just around this area just to bring uh, some detail back. So first of all, I'm just going to zoom in and pick a clone tool. And now just going from uh, around here somewhere, uh, I'll hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, which gives me the target. So I'll just pick that area as a target. And now moving that area back over, I can just paint that in like so. I'll just alter a few bits around it as well like that. There we are. So with those two little things done, it just remains to um, pick a crop 
and this image is very nearly done. So I'll just find a ratio. I like to use 16 by 9 because it fits the videos very well. Um, and I'm just going to recompose that ever so slightly uh, just to bring it down a little bit, just to center it like that. So I, I like the uh, vignette effect which I've got in here, so I want to keep that. So we'll click on OK. And there we have it. So this shows just what can be done with a bit of pre-planning. Without taking separate pictures, this image is actually impossible to produce. But with a few simple lighting techniques, anything can become possible. And I think the result speaks for itself. OK, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image. Uh, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other pictures as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.